Badger fans, let's talk about some big announcements for the football side that had nothing to do with signing day, but big time news. Plus, is this the best running back class on paper ever? Let's talk about it. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Lockdown Badgers, your team every single day. Thank you for making this one of your first listens. Appreciate y'all so much. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Lockdown College for twenty dollars off your purchase. All right, let's get into it. I, I teased at the beginning. There is some big news that came out the last couple of days, and we've been so obviously caught up in signing day in this this cavalcade of of prospects coming to Madison. The good news that the this kind of got it's not swept under the rug, but we didn't talk about it much. We kind of maybe mentioned it really quickly and then moved on to the latest four star. Hunter Waller and Ches Malusi are coming back. This is really good news for a bunch of reasons, um, even reasons outside of just what they do on the field. I want to talk about those two players. Let's start with Hunter Waller. Hunter Waller is, and I've, I've talked about this a lot, like this new era of transfer portal, of NIL, of player marketability of player fluidity, like all of those. I think those are good things for players, by the way. I know a lot of people don't like those things. I've always said we people in all professions are constantly looking for better jobs, right? They're looking for opportunities that that suit them better, that they feel like are better fits. I don't see why athletes shouldn't do the same, right? Um, I I think there's nuance and there's a ton of gray area, and I, I don't even mean to open up that rabbit hole. And maybe we do a whole show on that. But my bigger point is, like, I don't. I don't really have that big of an issue with it, but what it means is now, and this is the hidden side of it that doesn't get talked about as much. You have to keep re-recruiting your own players and you're almost winning recruiting back. Like there should almost be a, a star system for the players that you kept from hitting the market, right? The players that you kept from going to the NFL or the players that you kept from going to rival teams, the players they get that you kept from getting poached, right? That was like a four star player retention instead of the four star transfer, like that, that player that almost left, that was a big deal. Hunter Waller is like a five star, right? Like you're not going to get anybody better than him on in the portal. And not not that he would have gone anywhere. Like he was either going to go to the NFL or, or come back to Madison, I think. But this says two things. The first is, again, I talked about it on the recruiting show. This is is good vibes and good news for the NIL department of Wisconsin. This tells you that it's, it's healthy, right? This tells you that there, there's a financial reason to come back. It's not that the only reason Hunter Waller is coming back. He's a Wisconsin kid. He loves this program. Like he is a heart and soul type of kid, but he's not coming back if there's no NIL there, right? Because why would he? So, I mean, that tells you that this is, and I, that you keep seeing these little indicators that things are healthy because recruiting is going well. You're not losing kids to other programs and you're keeping some of your stars. That means behind the scenes, things are working. Okay. That's really important. Um, you don't need anybody to come out and say, hey, we're really healthy on this front. Just look at the pieces and look at what's happening. And that's going to tell you that we're, Wisconsin's in a pretty good spot on that front. Um, now, Hunter Wooler, the player, 113 tackles last year, two picks. He's, he's the best player on the defense. He was the most consistent player on the defense. He was the eraser. He was the one guy who consistently showed up in moments, was able to, you know, snuff out big plays. I think I would like to see more disruption from him. I expected a little more disruption. I thought he would blitz a little bit more. I thought there would be more tackles for loss. I thought there would be three or four picks, a couple more fumbles forced. But he was a stud. Hunter Wooler was a stud on this defense. Getting him back is enormous because now you don't have to fill that spot. Now you can build around Hunter Wooler in a second year in this defense. You think he's not going to be better in year two in Trestle's defense? Of course he is. He's a grinder. He's a worker. And now maybe you put an Austin Brown next to him who was starting to flash at the end of last year. And now then you have two really physical athletic safeties. Um, I, I think that might be the way to go. But maybe it's also Braden Moore makes a push. Like there's a couple dudes there. But, yeah, this is a huge get for Wisconsin to keep Hunter Wolder in the fold. Because this is a guy, if he had wanted to go in the portal, he could have gone anywhere. He could have gone to the NFL. Um, I think he would like to improve on the film, and I think he would like to help Wisconsin improve. But, yeah, Hunter Wolder coming back is enormous for this defense. Let's talk Chess. Chess Malusi also comes back to me. This is like a four-star it's, I mean, it's, this is another big one. And, I, I you know, it's interesting. I, I heard a lot of people say – for Chez's sake, I almost want him to move on, you know, because he's had so many injuries. And again, that's another one where I always just sit back and say, 
if he wants to take another swing, let him take another swing. Like it's not our body. Um, you know, and if, if he would have hung it up or said, yeah, I'm done, I would have said the same thing. Like, good for you, man. But like, he loves playing football. He wants to go out on a high note. And the injuries he's had aren't the type of injuries that are chronic, right? We're not talking about a player like Aaron Witt who has a chronic foot injury or players with chronic hamstrings or groins. He broke his leg last year when somebody rolled up on him. He's broken a collarbone. Like, his injuries are freakish, flukish injuries. And those happen at running back, obviously. But it's not. It's really, honest to goodness, it's not a guy I look at and say, I think he's injury prone. I know that sounds ridiculous because he's got hurt every year. But his injuries aren't the injury-prone type of injuries. They're the bad luck injuries that happen in football. And could it happen again? Absolutely. I I hope to goodness it doesn't. Because if anybody deserves to have a, a healthy year just to show everybody what he can do, for better or worse, it's Ches Malusi. Um, he absolutely deserves it. I will be rooting like hell for him. I, I he If there's football gods out there, football karma, like he deserves health. And the other part of this, before he went down, he was the best back. Ches, Ches Malusi was averaging six yards a carry. He looked explosive. He looked like a great fit for this long go offense. So not only do I think we're getting back a guy who fits this offense probably better than he did the ball Christ offense. He looked productive. He looked quick last year. He looked decisive, ran with a little more power, caught four or five passes. This is a really good running back for this system, but he's just such an easy guy to root for, right? He's a, he's a guy that all of Madison should get behind and, and just hope for that healthy, healthy version of, of what he can do. The other part of this I, I really like is this is a great guy. I, I'm a big fan always of having mentorship in positional rooms, right? This is a great guy for uh, what do we have coming in? Three freshman running backs. You, Ches Malusi is an incredible guy to have in that positional group for those players, right? A player who's played at Clemson and Wisconsin for five years. That's that's college football pedigree. He's, he's been around a lot of great players. He's been around a lot of great coaches. He's been in two great cultures. He's been through crap. He's rehabbed. He's busted his butt. He's been productive. He's fought through it. He's stayed true to his teammates. You can tell when he got hurt last year, people huddled around him. He is beloved. Like, this is a beloved leader and chemistry and locker guy. And now you have him in that position room as three touted freshmen come in, and they're going to be able to learn from him. I mean, that's almost more valuable than – sorry, I'm, like, so excited. I'm, like, shaking my desk right here. Um, that's almost more valuable than the player itself because Dylan Jones, Dupree, Atuka, those are those are really talented players. But, man, you almost can't put a price on having a guy like Malusi in that room for them to emulate, for them to see, for them to pick pieces off of. I think it's perfect. Like, it's such a it's such an underrated pickup to get him back. You know, then you have to look at that depth chart. Right. So you have the three freshmen coming in. I know uh, there's been some more like like Longo, I think, had mentioned that he thinks all three might play. And then you have Malusi coming back. What does that tell you about the other guys? What does that tell you about Nate White, Aker, uh, Yacomelli? I think it tells you the coaching step isn't super high on them, potentially. Um, that's nothing I've heard. I haven't asked. It, it does make you look, right? It, if they had brought in a running back or two, they brought in three. And Malusi came back. I don't be surprised if somebody kind of leaves out of that area. And I'm not certainly going to name names because I, I don't like doing that kind of stuff. But that's suddenly become a pretty deep position with bodies and people want to play. Maybe Akinelli's a guy who could move around again. Like that is a, a talented athlete. Maybe they just need, I don't know. It's it's something to think about. The last thing on this that I would, I would point out that I think is really good is this is a vote for culture. When you get players that come back that, that potentially, especially in Waller's case, could go somewhere else. They're not coming back if the culture is terrible, right? They they clearly enjoy being a part of this. I think that bodes well for the culture, and it's a vote of confidence for the coaching staff. So I, these are home runs. Like getting Wooler back, getting Malusi back, that's that's worth more than any portal guy you're going to get. And I think the leadership they give the younger players is almost as valuable as the on-field production, which is also tremendous. So big-time pickups. I'm not going to sound the recruiting cannon, although maybe I'll get like a retention cannon. I don't know what that sound would be. All right, coming up, we're going to talk about uh, this running back class a little bit more. Is this the best recruiting class on paper that Wisconsin has signed in dot, 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 I don't know, forever? Let's talk about it. Let's go through some previous recruiting classes and compare and contrast. Uh, but first, today's show is brought to you by our great friends over at Game Time. Holiday season is here. This is a great, great opportunity 
to help someone get the tickets they want to get the tickets you want for yourself. Game time is that place to go. It is the number one marketplace in the world for people who just want simple, right? That that's what I am. I just want simple, easy. I'm not a planner. You get last minute flash sales plus pictures of what it looks like when you're going to sit down in the seat. That's easy. It's simple. That's what I need, right? Um, I, I can't deal with the logistics. I can't deal with all that nonsense of trying to plan stuff out. I just, what ticket do I want? What's the cheapest, easiest way to get it? That's game time. It is an incredible platform to buy all your tickets, all for everything, sports, concerts, theater, comedy. We've talked about it. It's the fastest ticking, ticketing, growing, uh, ticketing app growing in the country for a reason. It's because people use it. They keep using it. They recommend it to others. And those people use it. They recommend it to others. And it just continues to grow like that. Right now, snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Lockdown College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. You can create an account, redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, y'all. Let Let's talk running back classes now. Y'all know I'm a fan of Dupree, Jones, Etuka. Love all three of them. That's the three amigos. Great movie, by the way. For those of you in maybe in my generation and older. Absolutely love that movie growing up. Um, we are, anyway, I'm going to get off site. Let's, let's continue running back talks. We are not talking about classic comedies. All right. So I'm talking re re um, recruiting classes on paper, right? So not what they became. Obviously we have Melvin Gordon, Jonathan Taylor, but when they came in on paper, is this the best recruiting class at, at running back? our best positional group at running back that we've ever signed. So again, you have two four stars in this class and Kadena Tuka, who's a really solid number three, uh, had a great senior season. So let's just go back to the last couple of years. You tell me if one of these running back classes is better on paper than the one we just brought in. This will be fun too, because it's always fun to go back and look at recruits that came to the program and be like, oh yeah, I remember that guy. Or, oh my gosh, yeah, I, I don't know. So 2023 was Nate White. This class is definitely better than that. 2022, I don't think they brought in anybody. So this class is better. Uh, 2021, how about this? How about CPR? Remember this dynamic group of running backs coming in? Antoine Roberts, Loyal Crawford, and Jackson Ager, who, who is still here, obviously, and did yeoman's work last year. That class was headlined by Antoine Roberts and Loyal Crawford. If y'all don't remember, those two got in a fight, involved a knife. Um, both were only mid three-star running backs anyway. So even from a recruiting standpoint, they, they, they're nowhere close to this group. I actually kind of liked Antoine Roberts' film, but obviously it doesn't work out if you get in a knife fight. 2020, they brought in Jalen Berger. Berger was a four-star kind of all-purpose running back. But again, doesn't that's all they brought in that last. That doesn't match up to this year's class. Um, and by the way, and I think both of these these top guys coming in on paper, on film, from recruiting standpoints, from offer lists, are better individually than Jalen Berger anyway, right? And they got two of them, plus getting a Tuka. 2019, you had Julius Davis and Quan Easterling. He's more of a fullback. I'm including fullbacks on this list. Yeah, I mean, that class certainly isn't better. 2018, you have Grendo and Watson. Watson was a four-star, by the way, out of Texas. If, if anybody remembers, sometimes... I'm like, gosh, I wish I had a locked on bed to show at that point. Cause I I was flummoxed by the idea that Nikia Watson was like a almost a mid four star running back. Like he wasn't even like a borderline four star guy, I don't think. I didn't like the film that much. Um, that class is certainly not better. That was 2018. 2017, he had Jonathan Taylor, one of the great college running backs of all time. But again, on paper, certainly, and that was the only guy in that class that it's not a better class than this one. 2016, you had Sam Brodner, who even let me know in the comments if you even remember Sam Brodner. I do. Um, he tore up his knee. And I, I think he, he listen, he, even without that injury, he was a, a unheralded kind of low three-star, borderline two-star guy. That was never, there was never going to be juice there with Sam Brodner. 2015, Bradrick Shaw and Alec Ingold. Bradrick Shaw was a four-star running back. But again, I don't think he's a four. He wasn't a four-star running back with Alabama offers, right? Uh, like uh, Dupree and, and Dylan Jones. Um, so we're back to 2015. I mean, there's not even a class that compares, in my opinion. There's not even a class that's comparable yet. 2014, Taiwan Deal, Caleb Kinlaw. Ta Taiwan Deal was a four-star. Caleb Kinlaw was kind of an interesting um, running back out of South Carolina. Never did a whole lot. Taiwan Deal, you know, was a starter for a bit till injuries, and then he got usurped by Jonathan Taylor. 2013, he had Corey Clement. Great running back at Wisconsin. Again, 
maybe maybe he was kind of of the pedigree in remember I remember watching film of him. He's kind of of the pedigree of a Dylan Jones, Darian Dupree, but there's only one of them in that class. So 2013 is not better. 2012, Fonte Jackson, Leo Musso. Um, Leo Musso obviously ended up moving positions anyway. Vontae Jackson dealt with three ACL injuries. Ugh. And again, this is why doing this kind of stuff is kind of fun anyway. You kind of go back down memory lane. Vontae Jackson could have been, he could have been really, really good. Um, coming in the year after MG3, they were teammates at Kenosha. He was really dynamic in high school. Uh, I heard, I have heard people say they liked his film high school-wise better than Melvin Gordon. I would disagree with that just having seen the film of both of them. But even to be mentioned in that category tells you how good Vontae Jackson was. And he just, that's super unfortunate. The knee injuries never let him show show anything like he could have done. Uh, 2011, you have MG3 and Derek Watt. Again, like Melvin Gordon, one of the great running backs of all time, but that running back class on paper isn't this one. And 2010, James White, Jeff Lewis. I always thought Jeff Lewis would do a little more here too. That he was a pretty physically talented player. Obviously, James White, a total stud. But again, like we just went back 14 years. And there I don't think there's one that's in the category of this one. There's not one where you look at and and even argue, yeah, that's that one from a recruiting standpoint was kind of on par with this one. Not that I see, right? That that tells you how good this class is at running back. This is one of the best running back classes in the nation. And like going back through Wisconsin, running back, you go back through the pedigree of, the, of these classes. None of them compare, quite frankly. Now, that doesn't mean any of these players are going to be better than any of those, right? Now they have to prove it. We There's several four-star running backs looking back at our previous classes that didn't pan out. There's a couple that exceeded expectations. But this is such a a dynamic, talented running back class. And I put this list together to kind of help illustrate it. But I also put it together because I wanted to see, right? I, I, as I went back, how I, I kind of had that same question in my head. Did, did any of these compare from a recruiting standpoint? And none of them do. Now, maybe I'll take a deeper dive and look back 20 years prior to 2010. Again, I only went back to 2010, but I, I doubt you're going to find one that that beats this one out. Let me know if there is, but it's, it's, a, hell, it's a heck of a good class. And... Badger fans should be very excited about it. And for, for the people who they, they, cause there's a draft mentality with recruiting, right? A lot of people want to say, don't judge classes now, wait for three years. And that's fine. Like, I, again, I've said this before on the show. I never tell anybody how to fan. If, if that's what you want to do, that's totally cool. Right. It, to me, it takes the fun out of it. I, I say, be excited. If you, if you land a great recruit or a great um, class or a great positional group, you're a fan. Be excited about it. If it doesn't pan out, it doesn't pan out. Who cares? Um, and it may pan out. It might pan out, by the way. It might pan out, by the way. But that's where I'm at. I'd say be excited. Uh, but if you don't want to, if you want to wait for it, that's fine as well. All right, coming up, I want to talk about a, a potential secret weapon for the Badgers. Somebody that um, I'm kind of interested in and a positional change there. But first, today's episode is also brought to you by our friends of the show over at FanDuel. FanDuel is the number one sports book for a reason. It has everything you need. Futures, betting on the 49ers win a Super Bowl. Parlays, you can parlay Brock Purdy, Super Bowl MVP, and a Super Bowl win. Uh, teasers, you don't need to tease anything with the 49ers because they're steamrolling everybody. Spreads, the 49ers always have big ones. Yeah, whatever you want to do, you can do it on FanDuel, whether it's, again, uh, whatever team, whatever sport, whatever betting style you want. It's fast, easy, simple to use. The the user interface is great. Like, it's one of the best ones out there. That It used to be, like, betting sites would just be chaotic, right? You'd have to, like, search for what you wanted. The fonts were weird. FanDuel's, FanDuel's made for, for people who don't got time for that nonsense. It's fast, simple, easy to use. They have a great offer right now. First-time customers can win $150 bucks in bonus bets with a winning $5 money line bet. That's $150. Bucks if your $5 money line bet hits, that is a great, great offer. And, the, again, the app is incredibly easy to use. So visit FanDuel.com slash college. That's FanDuel.com slash call. Actually, FanDuel.com slash on. Sorry, visit FanDuel.com slash on. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of the NFL. All right, let, let's talk about something that, that kind of came across the newswire. And it, it was kind of hidden in stuff. Uh, Jesse Temple released a tweet that said, uh, James Thompson Jr. mentioned TJ Bowlers has been working with the defense line in practice. 
I low-key kind of love this move. I mentioned to Justin, uh, I think we were just talking. I was like, what do you think about TJ Bullers just maybe moving to defense line and being there? Right. I, I kind of low-key love this move. This is – this could it not pan out and nothing come from it? Absolutely. Because, you know, it, it the, the easy argument here is, well, if he could play defense line and this team needed defense alignment this year, then why didn't they just do it this year, right? That, that, that kind of points you in a direction of it, the, the juice probably isn't there. However, I would say this, this is a guy who, let's go back to the recruiting pedigree, four-star player, a lot of offers. Um, even guys like, you know, Alabama was in on him. Iowa, I think, defensive player of the year, had 35 tackles. Um, but he was big. He was always kind of a tweener. When he came into the program, we talked about it. Uh, I was doing the, the Bucky cast at the time. And we talked about it and said, this guy is, is a tweener, right? He, we're not sure if he's going to end up defense line or linebacker. And they started off, said, okay, let's go linebacker. And it didn't work. And then this offseason, but remember the recruiting pedigree, four-star player. He, had, he has physical tools. And then this offseason, he put on like 30 pounds, right? It was a big story. Brady Collins talked about him, came on the show and talked about him, raved about him. He put on like 30 pounds. So he's up to 270. Everybody's like, oh, defense lineman. And they're like, no, I'm linebacker. And I remember, I remember when we got the report of how much he weighed. I was doing a show. I'm like, oh, he's going to be on the defensive line. You're not going to play linebacker at 275. Uh, he's 6'2", 270, 275, whatever. You're not playing linebacker at that. But they were like, no, no, let's try it. I think what might have happened, and this might be me putting on my optimistic regime glasses. I don't know. Maybe it just took him a while to get used to playing at that way. Like, he tried linebacker. He wasn't quite ready to move the defensive line at that way. He was still kind of feeling it out. That's a big change in the offseason. And then he started maybe getting comfortable at defensive line. They started practicing him there. They switched him over. He's going to get some reps in the bowl game, apparently, at defensive line. There's a chance there's some juice there because of his recruiting pedigree, because of his athletic upside. Now he's 270, he's 6'2", 270, 275. And I'm telling you right now, he, he has a little bit of juice, right? There was a reason they, they continued to try him at linebacker. He's not. He's not a, he, an athletic zero. I think he could be interesting as even if it's – and it's a win, by the way, even if it's just um, depth on the defense line. Even if he, he's able to just successfully slot into the two deep, you know, we talk about it. Defensive line, you need waves. You need people. You need multiples. This is a player who could potentially do that and solve it internally. That's, that's one of the biggest wins you can get when you have a need, a positional need somewhere. And you don't have to go out and find somebody and recruit them in and worry about the culture and try to land them and expend a ton of resources in doing it because everybody you get takes resources. It takes recruiting guys, marketing guys, NIL stuff, calls, all this, marketing, emails, letters. If you just have a guy in house that you can switch and potentially help fill a position of need, that's simple, man. That's that's easy, right? That's that's lucky charms for breakfast in the morning, simple. Like you, that's a no-brainer. And I'm excited. I'm, I'm low key more excited about this than I probably should because I still remember the four star ranking. I still remember some of the film. I still remember liking the prospect. And now he just might be a defensive end. And that could be the best thing that happened for everybody. That could be win, 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 win. So I'm excited about it. And uh, that's the show today. Yeah. Let's, it was a good one. I enjoyed it. A bunch more content coming up um, on Wisconsin. Let's definitely talk later. TJ Bowler's defensive end. Let's go.